I have to tell you guys that watermelon is not my favorite thing. In fact, I don't think I've ever even bought myself a whole watermelon before I started testing recipes for this episode. And these are heavy. <laughs> I mean, that's enough of a reason never to buy one. And all I could think was that I'm glad that I don't live in a fifth floor walk up in New York anymore. So if you live in a fifth floor walk up in New York, go watch one of my other videos. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Stay. The recipes are really good. And that brings me to my next point, which is that even though watermelon is not my favorite, I feel like I kind of cracked the code with these recipes because I find all three of them mouthwatering. And I think you will too. I'm also going to make all three of them from this one 14 pound melon and still have a bunch left over for snacking or for making cocktails with. So I'm going to do something a little bit differently with this episode and I'm going to show you how I break down the whole melon to make all three of them before I jump into each individual recipe. First, I'm going to cut it in half. Then in quarters. And then in eighths. I'm going to work with an eighth of a watermelon at a time because that seems to be a manageable size. And the first thing I'm going to do is use a Y peeler to peel off the skin. And I'm doing that because I'm going to pickle the rind use that in my pico de gallo. Now I'm going to slice it into slices that are about an inch long and use my paring knife to cut the rind away. Then I'm going to stack the fruit part and slice again to make the cubes for my skewers. And any parts that don't become perfect cubes go straight in the blender and they become juice for the granita. For the rind slices, I'm gonna break them down so they become two inch by half inch-ish rectangles. It's a little bit harder when they're not evenly shaped, but just do your best. I'll use my paring knife again to clean up the flesh a little bit. You want to leave a teeny tiny bit of pink on it because it looks so pretty when it's pickled, but don't leave too much because it will get soggy. And whatever you slice off goes in the blender. Once I've got all my cubes, I'm going to take some of them and dice them into smaller cubes, kind of a brunoise dice. And that's going to go in the pico de gallo and also in the couscous that accompanies the skewers. So, as a result of my effort, from half that watermelon, I now have about two pounds of rind to pickle. I've got about two and a half pounds of cubes, uh, about a cup and a half of which I diced into the brunoise. Three cups of watermelon juice once I strained it. And I still have half a melon to play with. I can do the whole thing again. Let's get started on our pickles. So first I'm going to boil the rinds in salted water for about five minutes. Remember this is two pounds of rind and this is six and a half cups of water and four and a half teaspoons of salt. They're going to get a little soft and they're going to get a little pale. And I'll drain them and let them hang out in the colander while I make a brine. So back to my pot. I'll add a cup and a half of distilled white vinegar, a cup and a half of sugar, and one tablespoon of pickling spice. This is that McCormick pickling spice that I really love and keep around all the time. I'll bring that to a boil and let the sugar dissolve. Then I'll add my rinds back in and cook them for another five to eight minutes just until they start to get a little translucent. Now I'll transfer the rind to some jars and 
pour the brine carefully over the top. I'll leave them out here on the counter until they've cooled to room temperature and then I'll refrigerate them overnight and tomorrow they will be ready to eat. This is a great snack, just on its own. Mm. But I'm gonna be a little extra and make a really special pico de gallo with it. So here's my brunoised watermelon, <laughs> if brunoised, past tense is a word, that I made earlier. And I did the same thing to an equal amount of the pickled rind. And that's the base of this pico. I'm also adding a tablespoon of diced jalapeno. and some herbs, some mint, and some cilantro, plus the juice from one lime. And you don't have to season it any more than that because the pickled rind is really, really salty, but obviously you can taste it and decide for yourself. You can also add more jalapeno if you like it spicier, or you could leave out the cilantro if you don't like it. That smells amazing. I can smell the watermelon and the herbs and the jalapeno. I'm just gonna eat this with chips today. But the possibilities for this condiment are endless. You can put it on grilled fish or grilled chicken. It's spicy and sweet and salty and fresh. It's awesome. I really wanna put it on a hot dog. <laughs> because it kind of straddles that line between salsa and pickle relish. And honestly, what feels more iconic American barbecue than a hot dog with a watermelon topping? Even better, a watermelon topping that's inspired by a traditional Mexican dish and pickled using an Eastern European method. Love that. Years ago, there was this viral food craze about roasting a whole watermelon and then carving it table side like it was a ham. And it looked super, super cool. But A, I didn't want to spend hours roasting an entire watermelon only to wind up with an entire watermelon as my entire main course. <laughs> so this dish is my way of taking that trend and making it a little bit more accessible. It has two major flavor components. One is a Moroccan-inspired dry spice rub, and the other is a pomegranate reduction that's going to get brushed on the top, and that's what I'm going to make first. In my saucepan, over medium-high heat, I'm combining one-fourth of a cup pomegranate juice, a tablespoon of sugar, and the juice from half a lemon. I'm going to bring that to a boil and let the sugar dissolve. And then I'm going to reduce the heat to medium low and simmer until it's just thick enough that it sticks to itself and I can make a little trail with my spoon. See that? And then I can just set it aside until I'm ready to use it. Now I'll mix up my spice blend. It's a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of coriander, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Now I've got my perfect watermelon cubes that I prepped earlier. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm only going to make four skewers today. I also have some cubes of beautiful yellow fin tuna, which delightfully mimic the color and the shape of the watermelon. I'm going to toss this with olive oil, then my spice blend, and a whole lot of salt and pepper. Mm. 
one of my issues with the whole roasted watermelon is that all of the flavor and all of the caramelization is just on the outside. So if you're serving it in slices, you're mostly just getting a plain old watermelon that's been heated through, which is, you know, kind of boring. With smaller cubes like this, you're gonna get a much more optimal surface area to heat and surface area to flavor ratio. Now, once they're all nicely coated, they're gonna go onto the skewers, which I've had soaking in water so they won't burn, and then they can go right on the grill. I don't have a grill, and my kitchen doesn't have good enough ventilation to grill on the stove top, so I'm gonna do them under the broiler. Before I put them in the oven, I'm gonna brush them with my pomegranate reduction. Broil them on high for three minutes. Take them out, flip them, brush them again, and put them back in for another three minutes. I'm gonna serve these skewers with some couscous that I cooked according to the package directions, then tossed with some olive oil, lemon juice, pistachios, and some of that brunoised watermelon that I chopped up earlier, plus some cilantro and mint. These are kind of the herbs of the day. I'll finish this with a little squeeze of lemon and some fresh cilantro. This is one of those dishes where you really want to get a little bit of everything on your fork. I'm having watermelon for dinner, and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> the earthy richness of those spices that are lifted by that pomegranate reduction's tanginess, all of the great flavors and textures in the couscous, sold. Jersey, we have an iconic franchise called Rita's Italian Ice. I don't know if they exist outside of the tri-state area. I know that they're a Pennsylvania-based company. If you live somewhere else and you frequent Rita's, please let me know. But anyway, they have a menu offering. They call it a gelati, and it's layers of Italian ice and frozen custard on top of each other, kind of like in a parfait. So this dessert is inspired by that, and it kind of makes me think of childhood summers spent at the beach. It also uses watermelon in not one, but two ways in very ingredients fashion. To make my granita, I've got two cups of the watermelon juice. If you remember, I just pureed the fruit in the blender, and then I strained it through a fine mesh strainer to get out the seeds and some of the pulp. To that, I'm going to add the zest and juice of one lime, Really try to get as much zest as you can because those little green bits scattered through the frozen watermelon are really attractive. And depending on how sweet your particular watermelon is, you might want to add a tablespoon or so of agave nectar at this stage. But don't stress too much about that because you can always add more after it's frozen right before you serve it. Then I'm gonna pour it all out onto a sheet pan and freeze it until it's frozen throughout. A couple of hours should do it. I have this quarter sheet pan that I like to use because it fits so perfectly in this little drawer in my freezer. But it doesn't really matter what vessel you use, you just want to freeze it in a thin layer so that you can easily scrape it up. This is the hardest part. Oh, only minor spillage. And while the watermelon's freezing, I'm gonna make a watermelon syrup, similar to how I did the pomegranate reduction for the skewers. To my saucepan, I'm gonna add half a cup of watermelon juice. And a quarter cup of sugar. I'll mix that to combine. I'll heat it on medium high until it comes to a boil and all the sugar dissolves. Then I'm gonna lower the heat to medium low and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. You need a little bit of patience for this. You might notice the watermelon pulp kind of rising to the top. You can ignore that. 
<laughs> it will all blend to a consistent texture. At the 10 minute mark, you'll notice that the mixture is considerably thicker, although it might not look thick enough to be syrup yet. That's okay. At this point, turn off the heat, let it sit, and it's gonna thicken some more as it cools. Keep in mind, we're gonna be serving this over ice cream, so it's definitely gonna harden a little when it hits the cold surface. All right, my watermelon juice is nice and frozen. Look at that. And my objective now is to shave it so it can be spooned. I'm gonna start by just scraping it with a fork. As you work, the bottom is gonna start to thaw, so eventually it's gonna crack into pieces like icebergs. And then you can kind of slice as well as scrape. You could also do this little twisty motion. Maybe it has a name. Then when you've got it in the bowl, keep mixing it up until it's got a consistent shaved ice kind of texture. And at this point you want to taste it. And if it's not sweet enough, you can add some more agave. But keep in mind, you're going to be layering it with vanilla ice cream and with the watermelon syrup. So you might not want it to be super sweet. That said, you don't have to finish this recipe. You can just put this in a bowl and call it a day. <laughs> but I'm gonna make a sundae. I love me a mason jar dessert. So fun. So I'm gonna start with a layer of granita. Then a scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'll put a little more in there, pack it down. Then another layer of ice. Another scoop of vanilla, and I'll make this a, I'll try to make this a pretty one, because that's gonna be the top. I'll drizzle it with my watermelon syrup. Oh yeah. Look at these pretty colors. And I'm gonna top it with some chopped pistachios. I love pistachio and watermelon together. Also, it's a nice textural and color contrast, and it's kind of a nod to this dessert's Italian roots. I mean, <laughs> let's eat it. Oh, that's so good. It's just like Rita's. Well, it's a little fancier than Rita's. It takes me right back to childhood. I just want to be at the beach and I want to be 10 years old. <laughs> Although I never had anything quite like this when I was 10 years old. I would have been into it. And that's it, you guys. Three ways to win with watermelon. As always, you can find all these recipes and more at wingredients.com. Follow me on social media, at Wingredients. Subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you next time.